Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I am Fran Gallucci, the chairperson. D you can't hear me? That's a first. Can you hear me now? Uh, we only have four members at this time. We are waiting for two more, but we are going to start. I give a little explanation, explanation before we begin. So I'll try to make it as lengthy as possible. If there is anybody, when you do come up, if you do not want to hear, have your petition heard with just four, because with four you have to get four yeses, we'll oblige you and wait. But I'm, I'm sure Kevin and Barry are on their way. The City of Peabody Zoning Board of Appeals meets tonight in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and other applicable laws. Tonight's meeting will be heard in this manner. The Secretary will read the legal notice or state that such notice has been waived. The legal notice is we read what you are here for and we read what dimensions you want and if it's a garage or a deck, that's your legal notice. All applications will be heard in the order they were received in the city clerk's office or as otherwise designated by the chair. So tonight we will hear everything in order unless you feel that you would like to wait, which probably won't happen. The other men will be here soon. The chair may limit the length of all remarks. So this is how it works. Uh, we say, the secretary reads your name, he reads what you're here for, and then you come up to the podium, turn it on, make sure you see the little red light, and you state why you're here. Now, last month I went through a little spiel about hardship. So you are here tonight for a garage, an addition, a fala, a farmer's porch, whatever you're here for, you're here because you didn't have enough space, frontage, footage on your lot. So you need dimensional relief. However, the loss clearly states that you're here because you have a hardship. A hardship, and the best example I can give you is you have a house and you want to put an addition to the right side of your house and you have a brook on that side of the house. Your family is growing, you really need the room, you clearly can't build on the right side of your house, so you need to build on the left side, and your neighbor is too close, so you need some dimensional relief. You have a hardship, you come before us, you state your claim, and we uh, approve it or we deny it. Um, so, a couple of things that happen. You, you state why you're here, we ask you questions, and then I will say, is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak in favor? So usually there are a few neighbors that go up to the podium, they state their name and address for the record, and they tell us what a wonderful neighbor you are, and they don't mind that you're going to build uh, an addition, and it's not going to interfere with their life, and they're happy. Wonderful. Then I say, is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak in opposition? Usually we have a few. It looks like there's a nice little crowd here tonight, so there might be a number of you that want to speak in opposition to whatever. So, one by one, you'll come up to the podium and you'll state your name and address for the record. You'll then tell us why you are in opposition. Things like, the neighbor's dog box till three in the morning, their children le rev their car up at 7 a.m., their leaves fall in my pool, we don't care, we won't hear it, I'll do this, and that's not why you're here. You're here to tell us why that addition or garage, why you're in opposition. It's dimensional relief, it's not neighborhood stuff. The best time that we have for people to get approval is when you've already spoken to your neighbors and you've shown them what you want to do and if they have a problem with it, you've 
been able to discuss it and agree on something. If, if we have 10 or 15 people that want to speak in opposition, you can all get up and say what you want to say, but if the first five people have said it all, just come up, state your name and address for the record, and say, I agree with all the other neighbors. You'll still get credit for it, okay? We also don't allow anybody to yell out from their seat, and, and it usually happens, okay? You, don't, you can't even raise your hand. You come up here, you speak. If you forget something, all right, you know, we'll let you come back as long as it's important. And I'm sure you all have something important to say. At that point, your attorney, your builder, yourself can go back up here and, and refute, discuss, you, my neighbors were wrong, this really doesn't happen, whatever it is. And then we can also ask, ask questions. Here's number five, so we're good. <laughs> after all that, and after, after your legal counsel, your builder, everybody is all set with what you've said, who said what, our questions are answered. We close the public hearing. We then vote the decision either for or against. The decision is then typed and filed with the city clerk. Once the decision is filed with the city clerk, a 20-day appeal period begins. There has seemed, there seems to be not an issue, maybe a little confusion. When you get approved, you don't know what to do. So Carla, our clerk, has typed something in detail. So if you get approved, she will give that to you, and it explains everything that, that happens from that point. But I will tell you, 20-day appeal period, you can't build for 20 days after it's time stamped, and that does include weekends. So it's not just Monday through Friday, it's 20 full days. In compliance with the open meeting law, this hearing is also being recorded stenographically, stenographically by our clerk. We also are on Channel 9. When you come up to the podium, please speak directly and clearly into the microphone so our little tape recorder gets it. And don't forget your name and address for the record. OK, hearing all of that, I'm not going to ask if you have any questions because I can't do that. We are now ready to begin. And number one is going to be continued. Do you have to say anything about that? Was already read into the record. Okay, and that was already read into the record. Hi, Cam. So now, now we're all here. See, so we don't have to worry about anybody. Forget what I said about the four people and the four votes. We are now on number two, Mark Smith, 18 Douglas Street. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Mark Smith, 18 Douglas Street, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 18 Douglas Street, Map 83, Lot 101, Peabody. This petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. Relief is needed to rear yard where 33.5 plus or minus feet are proposed and 35 feet are required. The property is located in an R1A zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Hi, my name is Mark Smith. I reside at 18 Douglas Street in Peabody and I'm here looking for a, or asking for a foot, in, a foot and a half of relief for a 14 by 24 um, addition off the rear of my house that will be used as additional living space. Um, we should have in my file um, letters um, from both of my neighbors that um, supported this. Um, and I just basically have a deck out back right now and I have a walkway and I'm just looking to um, remove the deck and the walkway and add additional living space um, where that currently is. I see here that you already went before the Conservation Commission? I did. and. Um, Conveniently enough, I actually got the letter today in the mail um, approving it, so I can provide that um, to your clerk, and she could put that in my file. If that's or whoever. Okay. We'll read that in. I brought a copy for you. Yes. I have a copy at home. 
Yeah, we have. No. You want to read it? Yeah, let him. Uh, letters dated May 17th from the CONCOM uh, regarding the uh, determination at 18 Douglas Street. Dear Mark, in close, please find one certified copy of the determination for the above reference property. Please feel free to call if you have any questions. The appeal period for this project ends on June 1. Work can start the day after on June 2 or after the erosion controls have been inspected. Please note page 3 of the negative determination states your conditions. I highly suggest you read the document in its entirety. Please note this is a wetlands permit only. You must file with the building inspector's office for a valid building permit if one is needed. And that's from Lucia Del Negro, the CONCOM agent. You, you understand all of that? I do. Anyone want to see this? We're all set? Okay. The chair? Uh, it looks like it's the, uh, as you face the property, the rear left side that you have the issue with needing the variance. Um, I don't see a measurement on the rear right side of the addition. Is that over 35 feet there? Um, the variance is needed just straight to the back line of my property, which is the city's property, where I'm re required to provide 35 and I'm only providing 33 and a half, so that's where I'm asking for the foot and a half. Um, on it's, it's only on that, that particular corner of the addition, right? Correct. Okay. Since it's only a foot and a half, is there any way to scale the addition back a foot and a half and you can put something in there by right? Um, well, at the time, I was looking for the extra for the foot and a half just due to um, having a growing family. Um, I have an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old, and um, my house is currently under 1,100 square feet. So. Um, it's, you know, I feel like we, this would really benefit my family going forward um, in the future. And this is, is this going to be an um, extension off a kitchen? What is the proposed inside? Yes, it's going to be um, a family room. And I actually have brought the plans with me, and I brought some extra copies if you wanted to take a look at those also. Yeah, that'd be great. Through the chair. Yep. Is the uh, roof line uh, for the addition going to match the existing roof line of the house? Is it going to be any taller or shorter? Or, or do you, what, how, what's the roof going to do on the addition? Uh, it's going to be a little bit less. It's not going to be higher than the current roof right now. Uh, through the chair. Yep. I assume you can't slide the addition over because of the bulkhead or whatever that is jutting out from the rear of the house? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody in the... Go ahead. Um, are there going to be uh, stairs uh, or, or in a door outside the family room? Is there any uh, plan to build a deck off of that family room in the future? Or? There will be nothing off the back. Um, if you look at the driveway side, um, there's going to be a four-foot um, kick-out where we'll have a side entrance on the driveway side where you'll come in since there'll be no more access through the back now. Okay, so that kick-out, it, it's going to be towards the street? It's not... It's going to be towards my neighbor. Okay. Well, can you explain that to me again? So it comes four feet off the, off the existing driveway side of my house. It comes four feet off um, going in. Basically, you'll walk into those stairs, and that will bring you in to the um, addition. Um, I didn't want to do anything off the back, as that would require me to um, ask for more relief, what I, which I um, did want to do. And I'm also within um, the zoning on the driveway side to my neighbor, so I'm not asking for a variance there. It's within spec. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Hearing none, the matter is before the board. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? We're all Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.
Three, Elizabeth Thomas. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Elizabeth Thomas, 55 Aberdeen Ave, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 55 Aberdeen Ave, Map 108, Lot 68X, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. Relief is needed to the maximum lot coverage where 25% is allowed and 32.8% is proposed. Front yard where 25 feet are required and 17.8 plus or minus feet are proposed. Side yard where 20 feet are required and 4.6 plus or minus feet are proposed. This property is located in an R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Uh, Leanne Manning Howe, in care of Elizabeth Thomas, my mother. Uh, we're seeking a variance for in-law apartment. Oh, so, I uh, hear, I, I, what? I see that you, um, there is a note here from the Conservation Commission that wanted you to file for a request for determination of applicability uh, before any construction can commence. Uh, did you know that? Yes, I have a meeting with Lucia from there tomorrow morning. Anything else? Um, about six years ago, my mother was diagnosed with um, a full brain tumor. Um, my husband and I moved in with my family, my two children, so we could look after her and help her. Um, ever since then, we've been there caring for her. She's been helping us with our children. Um, she has been left with some neurological issues. Uh, financially, for her to stay in the house, she was a single woman raising two children. Um, and us being there has allowed her to stay in her home. So financially, it has beneficial to her and ourselves. If I could, through you, through the chair. Um, it looks like a pretty sizable addition, two-story addition. Yes. And you're saying it's for a father. Well, a father is restricted to 700 square feet. So where would the father on these plans actually be? Because you're, you're going to have to separate it and meet the requirements of the father. Uh, my name is Alan O'Connell. I'm the architect. And the, um, the 700 square feet is the lower level for uh, Mrs. Thomas. And above it is a, in a great room. Okay. Are you telling me that the great room is the common area? Yes, it is. And the building inspector is, you've discussed that with the building inspector that the upper level was going to be a common area? Has he yes. seen the plans? He's seen the plans. Yeah, he's seen the plans. So let's go through this again. You have an existing house. You have an existing house, and you are going to build up. Is that correct? Up oh. and down. Out. out. Out to the side. Up, down, up, up, and out. Out to the side and up. Where's Douglas Street? Dean Ave, is that uh, Gardner Park? Off of Lynn Street? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you know what? I
But we, we're going to see if there are any neighbors or anything and then have a few more questions. Okay. Are there any neighbors to speak in favor? In favor. Any neighbors in opposition? Raise your hand if you're in opposition. Okay, so it, so if, if you can just like stand over there. Yep. Okay, so if you are in opposition, then you can come over here, stand one behind the other, and, and we'll, we'll hear you, okay? You never heard anything I said? I didn't say anything. All I said was if you're in... Oh, so they're, 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 they're built... Why don't you go back up? It's not my petition. Speak nice and loudly so everybody can hear you, otherwise this is not going to go well. The acoustics aren't very good. We couldn't hear it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I wanted to build out for an addition for an in-law apartment for my mother. It's the light circles on. We're going to turn the fan off so everyone can listen to us. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm seeking to build an addition for an in-law apartment for my mother. Um, she... No, we don't want to know that. Okay. Just explain the addition. Where it's going to go, how big it's going to be, what it's going to look like, things okay. like that. Do you want to... Yeah, it's about 28 feet wide and about 28 feet from front to rear. It's going to go on the left side of the house, primarily. And it's going to be an in-law apartment on the lower level and a great room on the upper level. And we need relief because we're over the setbacks and we're also over the uh, lot coverage. And that's your explanation. So now we'll, we'll hear from the neighbors. All right. Okay? It, it, it is. It, it is. Well, you, could, you, you can come up now and, and speak it against it or for it. Well, ma'am, ma I'm, I'm, why don't you come over? I have an idea. I have an idea. This plan looks like it is over 700 square feet. Do you agree with me? Yes. So at this point in time, I'm only one vote. We will hear from, from the audience, but I don't feel comfortable voting on anything that is this large without first discussing this with the city, with the building commissioner and then taking a look at this in living color going to 55 Aberdeen Ave. So do I have anybody on this board that wants to add to that or delete from that? I'll make a motion to continue. Well, if they can't hear and they don't want to talk, I don't. Well then, Okay. Speak or don't through, through, speak. Through the chair to the neighbors. Are you here to speak on this project? No. Oh. Okay. All right. Is there anybody here that wants to speak on 55 Aberdeen Right Ave? here. And this All one right, right here. Miss, th well, and, and right here. Come on up. So come up to the podium, and you can come up right behind her.
Elizabeth Ross, I live at 50 Aberdeen Avenue. Uh, my concern is Hello. There you go. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Ross. I'm at 50 Aberdeen Avenue. My only concerns are when these plans, when we received the letters, and I had spoke to one of the people in that house, um, I was told it was a kitchen that was being, being done. My concern right now is that we have a trust land behind there that, you know, I don't, that is, this is bringing it right on top of it first of all. Second, the front of the house from the, the few seconds I saw the plan, I don't know, I, I, it's, not, it's not even attractive. To, I mean, the neighborhood is a challenge to begin with. It's a working class neighborhood. We're all trying to make it look as best as we can. But this actually, I, my fear is, I had no fears coming in here, I just had a question. But now my fear is that eventually that's going to be a two family because of the way it seems to be set up. And that has me concerned. What also has me concerned, not concerned, I have a question. How do they measure that frontage on the, on the yard from the street, the house to the street? Where does, that, where does it stop? Like they go from the house and how far out do they go? Because it says 25 and they're gonna cut it down to 17. To the property line. And, and unless, it, unless that area, which I don't believe it is, is zoned for a two family, it is? It isn't. Oh, I it's know. not. No. It's, it's not. Oh, I know, but it, it, there have been in-law apartments in places, and there have been businesses run out of certain homes without, I'm sure, the city knowing. So, you know, you ha on our street. So you have to, you, you know, it's like, it's like the old lady radar is going up. You know what I mean? It just doesn't want to get down. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not trying to make it difficult. I think it's wonderful that, that you know, that they can live with their mother. I don't think my daughter could. But... Um, I think it's wonderful that they're doing all of this. I just have concerns over the neighborhood because what we're seeing right now on that street is a renewal in a lot of, in a lot of the homes. And because this, that street's been a challenge for about 10 or 15 years, and it's finally starting to turn around a little. And I don't think that house is appropriate. For, first of all, there's no land. I don't know where the 37% came from. I'm puzzled by that, too, because it... <laughs> I don't know where these measurements came from, and they're probably all legit. It's just when it, the naked eye who's not trained in this um, sees it, it looks as if it's very close to property lines and this and that, and I'm just not, I'm just, I just want my questions answered. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience to speak in opposition? My name is Janet Nunes. I lived at 51 Aberdeen Ave, and I'm right next door to this. And my concern is the size of this building for the size of the lot. The, the lot itself is exceedingly small. And to put an addition onto this property that is going to extend it even further on this tiny lot, I, I can't, I, I'm overwhelmed by that and I don't think it's a proper thing to do for the size of that lot. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience to speak in opposition? Okay. You would like to say something? Surely. It's really difficult to, from reading that paper to see what this is going to look like. 
a diagram of what the where the property is and what's going to be done on it is really necessary. I mean, we can read words, but and, and the front of the house looks like it's going to be very different. And this, this is a small neighborhood. This isn't like some place where you have two and three family houses. Um, can people hear me? Thank you. Uh, I've lived there for a lot of years. Uh, I can't even count, probably 60 years there. Did you state and, your name and address? Huh? Could you please tell us your name and address? Um, name, Shirley Caproni. I live at 52 Aberdeen Avenue, and I've been there for over 60 years. And this sounds like it's going to really change the look of the neighborhood. And um, I own property in back of that house. And people have told me there's been a deck back there for years, which is like a foot away from my property. But because my health has been bad, I haven't walked back there. So I didn't know that. And I just saw that the other day. And I'm thinking, when did this happen? Where I was? Where was I? Was I sleeping? And so I have to be concerned about what's going on. Because when that happened back there, and I just found out about it, that there's this deck and it's been there, I used to walk back there. So I'd have seen it. But um, so I have, I'd like to see a picture of this, a diagram of it. It sounds very strange that there's going to be all house and no property. And that isn't what the neighborhood looks like. This is not like a two-family neighborhood. I mean, I've, they're all capes and some ranches and, you know, some two, but nothing like this. And so I'm just, a current, it's going to be all house and no lot. And it sounds like it. If you could see that, you would think that. Uh, so I think we all have a concern about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, through the chair. Yes. I just have a question. If I could get the applicant back at the podium, please. I'm looking at the um, engineer's uh, survey, and the um, the neighbor just mentioned that there's a deck to the rear of the property, but I don't see any deck drawn on this plan. Can you let me know if there is a deck and where it should have been on the plan and if there is a deck, why it wasn't there? I believe it was done in 1980. But, so there is a deck? My, yes, my mother's been there since 19, 1976. And do you, do you know why the deck is not on this stamped survey? Uh, yes. Um, that deck is going to become a screen porch. The existing one. The existing okay, so, deck. but, but, is this an up-to-date plot plan? Yes, it was just done. I don't think we can vote on this. If there's, no, there's, there's too many problems with, with you this. You can withdraw or we can vote and it's not going to probably pass, so I think it's. That's the deck that you're, the question. But, right, but, but it's supposed to be on the plot plan, so. The mat Just to the chair, if I could. Um, did everybody explain to you the, the requirements for a fava? 28 by 28, the math doesn't add up. It's over 700 square feet, which, you know, maybe the building inspector looked at it, maybe his calculator wasn't working that well. The 28, that, once that stops being a fava, that's it. It, it stays no just the way it is. No one else can move in there. It's part of your house. Do you understand part of the, that? Yeah. Part of that is, is a common area. Huh? Part of that is a common area. Oh, man. You got a lot of common. You got over 700, 800 square feet of common area. No, no, no. The whole upper floor. No, it's not the upper floor. It's the lower floor is the, is the in law apartment. And then you have a lower floor. That's, All right. That's, that's what the 700 square feet is about. Where's, Not both floors. Where's the common area? The common area is the stairs going up from the lower level to the upper level. The two floors aren't a total of 700 square feet. We're just talking about the lower level, which is the in-law apartment. Through the chair. But didn't you say that the first floor was 28 by 28? I didn't say that. Somebody said it. Yeah, you did. Well, it's 28, but it isn't a square. 
About five feet of that along the back is a common area with stairs leading up to the uh, second floor. Okay, so how many square feet is the first floor going to be? It's going to be 700 square feet. On the nose? Yeah, a plus or minus. I mean, well, it can't be plus. It has can't to be, be minus. Plus. It, it, this is not a plus or minus well, activity. Okay, The walls are the outside too. We're talking about whatever the livable area is. The livable area is, is 700 square feet. I think we should have the building inspector look at the plan. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm not sure that this is. Um, I, I, we can either vote on this right now or we can continue this. But uh, through the chair, I think I put a motion to continue this. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we are not on this this evening. This is going to get continued. Uh, we are going to, all of us, take a look at 55 Aberdeen Ave. We're going to talk to the building inspector, and I'm sure he will get back in touch with you, and the clerk will tell you what the procedure is for a continuance. I'd like to add that I'd request a, uh, an updated plot plan that shows the deck and what's what's to happen to the deck and I think some measurements on the proposed foundation addition would also be helpful through, through the chair I think what you're doing is very admirable don't get me wrong I just wish it came before us as an addition then we could have put how would you want to do but your application says it's a division for a fala if you're going to be a fala we have to be certain that it meets the requirements of a fala before we can grant any relief even though I think, I don't know, the city council, I think, does the follow to be still. So, have you been to the city council to get the follower approved? I think we need to look at, no, not more, right? Okay, That's so, so. Yeah, all right, that, you're right. That's done. They don't do yeah. it anymore, so. So, maybe tomorrow you can call Carla, maybe about 10 a.m., and you can tell them step by step what to do for next month or the month after. Thank you. Number four, Notices, Michael oops, and John sorry. Luck. <clears throat> Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Kevin Kyler, representing Michael and Don Luck of 6 Pinewood Road, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017, as amended Section 7-2, as it applies to the premise known as 6 Pinewood Road, Map 22, Lot 143, Peabody. The petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. Relief is needed to the rear yard where 14.9 plus or minus feet are proposed and 35 feet are required. This property is located in an R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Uh, yes, hi, my name is Kevin Keeler. I'm the chief designer for Brady Built Sunrooms in Auburn, Massachusetts. Um, so uh, Mike and Don Luck um, purchased this house back in uh, the fall of uh, 2018, uh, Six Pinewood Drive, and the house is desperately in need of uh, repairs, a lot of repairs and remodeling. So they've done extensive renovations uh, since then, and their hope is to move into the house when the renovations are complete. One of the issues with the house was that it has a very, very small kitchen and a dining room area that you can barely even put a table in. Uh, so they wanted to be able to open up this area large enough to have a dining room table. Um, the current dining area is only eight, 11 feet, 8 inches wide. Um, so to match that, we designed a, a, a room, sunroom addition, that's 11 uh, feet, 8 inches by 14 feet. And if you see the attached plans are in your package there. Um, in discussing this with the building inspector, at first we thought there wouldn't be no issue with a rear yard setback, because if it was a regular shaped lot, it would have plenty of rear yard setback. But um, we discovered in uh, getting a new plot plan done that the rear um, of the property has a very unusual uh, uh, rear uh, um, yard setback, or I mean a very unusual rear lot line, excuse me. It comes, it's a triangular shape and it comes to a point right on the back of the house. Unfortunately, that point is located right where the addition um, is proposed to be. 
So what we did was we tried to figure out how to redesign the house and slide the room one way or another to make it work. But the problem is, is that there's a basement entrance on the right-hand side um, that has a vestibule built there. And when you try to slide it over that way, uh, you're still going to have the left-hand side of the addition um, will require a rear yard setback. And then if you slide it to the left, um, it, 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 the it's required to slide it all the way over until it's not requiring a rear yard um, setback uh, variance. We would put it in the rear of the garage, which obviously isn't going to be resolving the situation. Hence, a hardship. Hence, a hardship. Thank you very much. Um, so we're respectively requesting the board um, uh, grant us a rear variance of 20.1 feet. Um, we feel this can be done without degradating from the spirit and intent of the zoning bylaw and have no negative impact on the surrounding houses. In fact, we feel it will be a benefit to the surrounding neighborhood because it will increase the value of the house and we build very nice additions. Um, so um, we, re we respectfully request that you grant us a variance so we can proceed with the project. It looks very nice. Questions by the board? Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody to speak in opposition? Hearing none, the matter is before the board. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Five, Peter. Graziani. Notice hereby given that the Board of Appeals City of Peabody hold public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Peter Graziani, 22 Tracy Street, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017, as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 22 Tracy Street, Map 86, Lot 51A, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed extension of a deck. Relief is needed to left side yard, where no feet are proposed and 10 feet are required. Property is located in an R2 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. Just for the record, I have to recuse myself from this here. Just for the record, and what are you here for? Uh, Peter Graziani, I'm looking for a variance uh, for 22 Tracy Street in Peabody to uh, extend the deck over four feet to uh, clear the lower level entry door. You have to explain it a little bit better than that. Um, so I'm making the deck four feet bigger because it's um, on the second floor. And the first floor, the door, the stairway will cross the door. So I had to move the deck over three feet to clear that doorway so the, there was no interference with the first floor uh, apartment. So instead of it being four by four, it's four by nine. It's kind of confusing. Oh, look at the pictures. Through the chair. So this deck is one story high? Yes. Okay. And there's a lower level door, so when the stairs come down, it would cross the front door. So I had to move the deck over four feet to clear that door. It's in the same place, the deck. It just came over four feet. I think this is probably a, a safety thing. I would imagine Yeah. it needs to be that big. Yeah. Four by four? Yeah. The, bill, the bill inspector wanted me to do this to make just to do it this way. Yeah, if I move the door, right. It's a safety issue. Any other comments? In the audience, anybody to speak in favor? You may approach. Name and address for the record. My name is Frank Vasconcelos, and I am the trustee of 20 Tracy Street, the property right to the left of 22 Tracy Street. I've already, talk I've already talked with Mr. Graziani. I looked at the plot plan and looked at the builder's note. 
and I approve the proposed variance. Thank you. Anybody else? In opposition? Hearing none, the matter is before the board. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're all set. A pained look off your face wasn't that bad, was it? Number six, Gary and Maura Kelly. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Gary and Mara Kelly, 3 Janet Lane, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 3 Janet Lane, Map 107, Lot 212, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed additional deck. Relief is needed to the rear yard where 21 feet are proposed and 35 feet are required and side yard left where eight feet are proposed and 20 feet are required. That's the left side yard. Pro properties located in R1 zoning district, the application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. I'm Mara Kelly from 3 Janet Lane uh, and we are re requesting a variance. Um, we're building an additional deck because we installed a pool last year. So this deck would be um, around the pool. Uh, because it's going to be right next to our existing deck, we wanted to attach it. So because it's considered attached to the house, um, we need 14 feet of relief in the rear and then 12 on the left. And there will be stairs going down uh, each side, which I don't believe are shown on the plan. So you, you have, a, you have a, an existing deck? Yeah, but it's, it's, raised, it's a, attached to the house, but it's a higher level. And it looks like there's a little something or other going to the pool. W w is that the deck? No. Nope. Are those stairs? It might be stairs coming off the existing the, deck. This little thing? Yes. Yeah, those, those are the, are the stairs, stairs going coming down off the, the deck. Now, and that's on the second story. Floor, basically, so there's a garage under the addition there, and the deck would be at the height of the pool, like some of the other neighbors have similar stuff. So Through on the plan, the chair on your extension of the deck, are you going to have stairs that are going to come down to your backyard? Yes. yes. So they'll go, if you're looking out at your pool, they'll go down to the right? Correct. Yes. And will there be stairs coming off the upper level deck or no? Yes, yes. yes going down to that level, mm -hmm. yes. Going down to the yes. level, but not going to the yard? No. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I see. So basically, you, ju you want a deck so you can sit there and jump into the pool or whatever. Yeah, to make it easier to go on the pool instead of going downstairs going back up. Because, like, some of the other neighbors around us, you can see they have very similar. Very be more, similar. It would be more private, too, because it's lower right now. The deck that we have on the house is raised up. So. Through the chair. Did you get a variance to get the pool in the first place? Yeah. You did have a variance for the pool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we did. Mm -hmm. That was last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? In opposition? And the matters before the board. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All set. Number seven. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Daniel Blaisdell 
One margin street court Peabody for a variance from the provision of the zoning ordinance 2017 as amended section 6.7, family accessory living area. As it applies to the premises known as one margin street court map 54 lot 97 Peabody. Petitioner seeks relief from original variance granted on March 19th, 2018, as it specifically excluded a kitchen. A variance is required to proceed with the addition and proposed VALA. The property is located in an R1A zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. Well, hello. Hi, how you doing? Name and address for the record. My name's Dan Blaisdell, and I live at 1 Margin Street Court, and I live in a Cape family type house, and I was approved on March 19th to build a um, 24 by 26 addition. And at the time I was confused, but um, I'm looking for a fala to, um, to add a kitchen for my uh, elderly parents. So tell me what happened. You went home and you said, oh, sorry, you can't have a kitchen. And <laughs> they said, oh, sorry, we want a kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly what happened. Really? Yeah. <laughs> got your advice. Yes. And you got all the... Yes. Well, thank you very much. That was, that was, that was great. Okay. Any questions, comments? From the audience, anybody in favor? Anybody in opposition? Uh, just for the record, this, this gentleman was before us last month and um, was a little confused on Fala yes. <laughs> versus addition. And he chose to continue, did a great job, did his homework, and here he is. And mo um, I can't make a motion. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Jose Fidalgo, 14 Lynn Street, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 7.2 as it applies to the premises known as 14 Lynn Street, Map 98, Lot 24, Peabody. The petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. The relief is needed to the right side yard where seven feet are proposed and 20 feet are required, to the rear yard where 26 feet are proposed and 35 feet are required, and to the lot coverage where 31.2% are proposed and 30% is allowed. The property is located in an R1B zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review of the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. Just for the record, I have to recuse myself from this one as well. I'm a neighbor. <laughs> Ashlyn Fidelgo, 14 Lynch Street in Peabody. We are looking to um, attach the existing garage to the existing structure um, to include a mudroom and a laundry facility. We, um, our neighbors gave us the excuse me, they signed a letter, which I also believe is in your packet. They're not here, but they've reviewed the plot plan and they've signed in favor of the addition. Where is Mansfield Street in relation to where you live? Uh, Mansfield Street is Behind us. us. Correct. So these are our immediate abutters to the left, to the right, and the three in the rear. So although we have a legal lot size, um, it's limiting in its size and the positioning of our home, regardless of which way we go. We're not exceeding the footprint, but because we're um, enclosing the space between the garage and the house, we need to seek a, va seek a variance for the so, hardship. So um, the height will be the same height as your house? Yes, it won't exceed the height of the house. And it's only going right in between that garage and house? Correct. They have the platform. So we actually have a photo of the back, so it shows what it, I can show it to you. Yeah, here we go. 
show it to us, we have to keep it. That's fine. I have uh, one. Just so that you can physically see where it's going. Thanks. So between here and there. Just pass them down, Joe. Sorry? No, it's uh, three houses down from Tommy's old house, yeah. Two. Oh, Tommy Gallant, yes, actually, yeah, that was yes, Tom Gallant. Yes, it was. It was Tom Gallant, yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you were thinking of uh, uh, Tom. We have a lot of Toms in the neighborhood. Roof line will stay the same. Correct. Deck is going to be removed. Correct. No deck, no steps or anything after this. Correct. The steps, the steps will be in the interior so that we can access the back door. And just enclosing this empty space. Correct. Make the best use of our current footprint. Comments from the board. Anybody in the audience in favor? Anybody in the audience in opposition? Hearing none, the motion matters before the board. Motion to close. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All set. Thank you. What are you recusing yourself now? No, oh. Thank you. You're all set. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st at the Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., on the application of Philip and Catherine Kindler, Salem, Mass., for a variance from the provision of the zoning ordinance as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 3 Flint Street in Salem, Map 104, Lot 181. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. The relief is needed to the rear yard where 30 feet are proposed and 35 feet are required, to the si right side yard where 19 feet are proposed and 20 feet are required, and to the lot coverage where 27.4% is proposed and 25% is allowed. The property is located in R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Hi, my name is Phil Kindler. This is my wife, Kathy, and we live at uh, uh, 3 Flint Street in Salem, Mass. Um, we currently have a uh, 12 by 16 deck on the back of our house, and we would like to convert that into a room uh, so that we could have a little more living space. Our hardship is that uh, we do not have enough land. Um, um, I, I, I just have to tell you, that's really not a hardship, but go ahead. Oh, it's not. The lot, the lot, the lot, the lot is too small. I'm sorry. So um, the setbacks for the uh, uh, rear yard are 35 feet required, 30 proposed. And for the side yard right, it's 20 feet required and 19 feet proposed. So we respectfully ask for a variance so that we could... Um, build this deck. And we've gone around, we've spoken to our neighbors on, on Flynn Street and also our neighbors on uh, Home Street behind us. Um, and we took around a petition um, to take a, take a, can you, can you look for that? But excuse me, but you have half a house in Peabody and half a house in Salem? Our, yes, yes. yes. Um, we pay taxes we, in both. We pay taxes in both and our entire rear deck is in Peabody, yet the front of our house is in Salem. You pay taxes to both cities? To both cities, yes. Pardon me? Oh. <laughs> Through the chair. Uh, the, let me just get this straight. You're, you're building a room, but the footprint's going to stay the same. You've got the existing deck. You're turning it into a room. Yes, the footprint would stay the same, same size room, yes. Okay, so it's not going to jut out any further than it already is? No, it's not. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all. Was, was that stated clearly enough? Because I, I didn't. Existing deck. Oh, so you're just closing in the deck? Yeah. Yes. 
roof line stays the same and Any questions by the board? Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody to speak in our uh, oh. We'll let our uh, so I'll, as a neighbor of Philip and Catherine Kindler, I have no opposition to them building a room on their existing deck for additional living space. I understand this petition will be submitted to the ZBA for the May 21st, 2018 meeting. And there are one, two, there are 15 signatures, one Flynn Street, eight, six Flynn, four, two Flynn, 50 Home Street. There's a bunch on Home Street, 43, 46, 41, 48, six, and, and then five Flynn Street in Salem. Um, and again, there are 15 signatures in favor of this petition. Anybody in opposition? Hearing none, the matter's before the board. Motion to close. Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? What's the joke? You're all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, this looks like number 10. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st at the Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass. On the application of AGA Foster, LLC, 6 Andrews Brothers Way, Peabody, care of Attorney John Kelty for a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as amended Section 7-2, and Section 10, Landscaping, as it applies to the premises known as 45, 47, and 49 Tremont Street, Peabody. Map 75, Lot 164, Petitioner seeks a variance to allow relief from footnote M of the schedule of dimensional controls where 37.5 feet are required and 5 feet are proposed for Lot 3A and Section 10 landscaping where none is proposed. The property is located in a GB zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall. It will be available at the time of public hearing. Thank you, members of the board. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney. I practice law at 40 Lowell Street here in Peabody, Massachusetts. I appear this evening on behalf of AGA Foster LLC, who has been the owner uh, of this particular parcel of land, which consists of hopefully three parcels of land. And he has uh, been the owner of that land since 2016. I have filed with you a uh, plan prepared by Eastern Land Survey. Uh, that plan demonstrates that there is a plan uh, which has been recorded. It was endorsed by the planning board in 2017, and it was recorded in 2017 in plan book 462 as plan 80. That plan actually does not conform with zoning. That plan ought not have been uh, signed by the PBD Planning Board. We are here this evening uh, to seek relief from uh, the footnote, which is uh, footnote M uh, in our zoning ordinance, which says that um, you need to, you can't be any narrower than at no point between the frontage line and the principal structure shall the lot be narrower than 75% of the required lot frontage. However, um, its application, and, and this was my suggestion, its application is contained in the heading section of the schedule of dimensional controls, creating an ambiguous application of the requirement. The, this particular uh, change to the zoning ordinance occurred in 2013. Um, a number of plans were signed uh, without sort of being mindful of this, uh, this footnote. Uh, this plan was signed and recorded in 2017. We're not here seeking any kind of relief that would allow us to uh, build anything new or reconfigure these lots uh, to any greater extent, but instead we're seeking uh, relief from footnote M so that the very narrow, I 
highlighted on uh, in yellow highlight. It's on the uh, lower side of your plan. You see that there's one little section. We have sufficient frontage, but there's a, a narrow section that is five feet. That's where we're seeking this relief. Then uh, if you were to grant this variance, we would be able to utilize this plan. If the variance were not granted, we would still be able to um, sort of go forward with our plans. However, um, we would probably need to condominiumize the two lots that are remaining and then create cross easements. Um, there was never an intention to use that narrow section as access. There was never an intention to um, uh, access anything from that particular side. We have a uh, driveway which is to the top of the plan adjacent to what shows as lot uh, two on the plan and we are uh, that is going to continue to be our uh, access. That is the subject of a uh, maintenance agreement and an access agreement. And so this evening is of a technical nature to allow for this plan uh, to continue to exist. And uh, it's not for anything in particular uh, being any particular construction. We have shown you a site grading plan which shows uh, eventual buildings wanting to be built, but we don't need any kind of variance for any of those buildings. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have and i um, happy to address concerns you may have. So, Attorney Kelty, did, um, has this been in the works for a couple of years. Has this ever come before us before? No. No, we have not required any kind of variances for this particular development. Do we know what this is all about? What's happening? Uh, the front portion of the lot uh, up uh, as it uh, presents itself up on um, uh, Tremont Street, that has been sold. That is going to be a small strip mall. Uh, there will be a convenience store in it and I think a dry cleaner and they're all uh, uses that are allowed by right. The rear lot, uh, which is lot 3A, uh, we are in negotiation currently uh, with a businessman here in Peabody who uh, has an ongoing business and uh, we're hopeful of uh, uh, coming to an agreement to sell him the property, and that's, uh, I think his name is, I know his name, it's Rick Hetherington, but I believe it's Performance Auto. We are not under agreement with him just yet. There's a substantial cleanup that has been taking place out there in as much as it was a former factory. Um, that cleanup is ongoing. Uh, the front lot uh, was not the subject at all of any kind of required cleanup uh, of 21E issues. And we have, a, um, we have a, a conservation commission order of conditions which allows us to build uh, adjacent to the stream and uh, allows us to uh, to create the stormwater detention facilities that we've shown on that particular plan. Just to clear up a, a tad bit of confusion, one more time, state exactly what you're looking for tonight. I'm, I'm looking for relief from, uh, I've attached uh, the schedule of dimensional controls. And when you look at the schedule of dimensional controls, you see that it says milda, minimum buildable area. And then it says depth M. And when you look at the second sheet, M says, um, at no point between the frontage line and principal structure shall the lot be narrower than 75% of the required lot frontage. And there is an area, as I've shown, I think I've highlighted it in yellow, right there. right there, where it's only five feet wide. However, no driveway, um, it's actually going to, um, there's gonna be an exclusive use easement over that particular parcel of land so that the owner of the front lot can actually landscape that. 
Right. Will. He will. Because he has no driveways. He has nothing out there that is concrete, so he's going to landscape it. Wall's actually under construction. I think it looks like it's supposed to be 16 feet on that particular plan, but it's 10. It's under 10, as a matter of fact. Any other questions, concerns by this board? Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Well, you guys are waiting for something, aren't you? Uh, more matters before this board, unless you have more questions. Take a roll call vote. Dan? Yes. Gary? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Steven? Yes. Fran? Fran. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All set, Attorney Kelty. Uh, number 11. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Rodolfo Florencio, 11 Holton Street, Peabody, care of Jack Kelty, attorney, for a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, Section 1052, and Section 93 of the Peabody Zoning Ordinance, as it applies to the premises known as 11 Holton Street in Peabody, Massachusetts Map 95, Lot 102. Petitioners seek a variance to construct a proposed two-family dwelling and need relief to the following. Lot area where 34,500 square feet are required and 2680 plus or minus square feet are proposed. Lot frontage where 75 feet are required and 40 plus or minus feet are proposed. Lot with footnote M where 56 and a quarter feet are required and 40 plus or minus are proposed. Front yard where 20 feet are required and 16 plus or minus feet are proposed. Side yard where 15 feet are required and four plus or minus feet are proposed. Rear yard where 35 feet are required and seven plus or minus feet are proposed. Maximum lot coverage where 35% is required and 50 plus or minus percent is proposed. Minimum buildable lot coverage where 35 feet are required and 12 plus or minus feet are proposed. Minimum buildable lot width where 25 feet are required and 10 plus or minus feet are proposed. Driveway width where 20 feet are required and 10 plus or minus feet are proposed. Landscaping where four street trees are required per 100 linear feet and none are proposed. Parking where 20 feet driveway width is required and 10 feet are proposed. This property is located in an R4 zoning district. The application and plot plan, plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Thank you, uh, members of the board. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney and I have offices at 40 Lowell Street here in Peabody, Massachusetts. I'm uh, here representing uh, Rodolfo Florencio. He, is, uh, he has entered into an agreement with the uh, Wells Fargo Bank of, um, of uh, uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. They are the owners through a foreclosure of this particular parcel of land. As the uh, secretary has said, the uh, property is located in an R4 zoning district. It previously housed a four-family home. Um, the bank foreclosed um, after consultations with the uh, building commissioner. Uh, they elected uh, actually at the uh, uh, cautionary advice of the, of the uh, commissioner, they elected to tear down the building such that um, uh, we, now, uh, in, we now need to uh, seek variance from the zoning requirements. The R4 zoning district requires a minimum of 34,500 square feet. Why this particular parcel of land is located in a, uh, which only contains 2,680 square feet, why it's located in an R4 zoning district doesn't make a great deal of sense. Most of our R4 zoning districts are located uh, up on Lowell Street where the tannery, um, 
Tannery Village condominiums were developed and where uh, the, on the left-hand side, that particular parcel of land uh, uh, was also R4 zoning. And there are portions down uh, near Crown and Shield Street and off of Warren Street, those are R4 zoning districts. However, uh, unique, I think, to the R4 district is that uh, I doubt that there is a single parcel of land that is uh, zoned R4 that contains the 34,500 square feet, which is uh, minimum for, um, for uh, development in the R4 zoning district. And it's also 750 square feet per bedroom. So we're here uh, to replace a two-family uh, I'm four family with a two family. We're proposing uh, that there will be driveways and uh, there will be uh, decks on the rear of the premises. There will be a left and right side unit. Uh, they will uh, all have uh, off street parking. Uh, we believe that this particular uh, situation is going to be much improved over what was there previously. Previously, it was a, a taller uh, f uh, four family uh, with units above each other, and uh, they had a, a, a real minimum of parking. When you look at the assessor's map uh, and you look at the assessor's records, uh, there was very, very little parking. Um, we're proposing to uh, provide that parking. Uh, provide some outdoor space with regard to decks, and we're seeking the variances that uh, were set forth in the uh, zoning notice. Thank you. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. uh, Attorney Kelty, it, you mentioned um, what was previously on the property. Uh, you mentioned a four-family dwelling. Um, do you happen to know what the dimensions of that dwelling were, what the footprint looked like compared to what's being proposed yep. in this plan? I think it shows on the assessor's record. There is a uh, picture in the assessor's records. It appeared to have been 24 uh, by 28 with two additions at the rear, 112 by 18 and the other uh, 18 by six. And they traveled out to the rear. And there's a picture as well on the um, uh, on the assessor's records. So basically, where it was 24 by 28, the new structure would be 30 by 36? Right. Okay. 36. Uh, however, it doesn't extend as far to the rear of the premises because of those two additions that were put on at some point. Right, because there was another 18 feet, so it was really 46 feet out, and now we're 36 plus a deck. Yep. So the deck basically would be almost the same. If you mm, add, or no, it's a little only an shorter, eight foot, but it's an eight-foot deck, so 44 feet as opposed to 46, two feet shorter. We're a little. Slightly smaller, a little wider, and we're um, uh, uh, less, far less depth. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments? Audience, anybody in the audience to speak in favor? In opposition, still none over there, huh? Okay, uh, matters before the board. Second. Motion to approve. Second. 
call vote. Yes. Twelve. The big pig barbecue. <laughs> Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Big Pig Barbecue and Catering, care of Chris LaBella, 108 Newbridge Street, Peabody, Mass. For a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as amended Section 11.5.2, as it applies to the premises known as 108 Newbridge Street, Map 68, Lot 12, Peabody, petitioner seeks a variance to allow relief from proposed wall sign area of 100 plus or minus square feet rather than the 75 square feet permitted. The property is located in a BR1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. How you doing? Christopher, Christopher LaBella, 14 Blue Jay Road, Linfield, Massachusetts. Um, I'm here on behalf of my company, Big Pig Barbecue, asking for a modest increase of uh, 100 square feet uh, to our current sign to make what is a tough to see location more viable for long-term occupancy. Um, we're just here to be a long-term contributor to, to the town and by adding the small increase, it will allow vehicles to find our location, which is somewhat hidden by the property directly before us. And, Are you uh, open yet? No, not, not, not yet. Not We're still yet. in the build-out phase, but very soon, hopefully. I threw the chair. So on this particular lot, there is a, I don't know, 5,000 square foot uh, billboard that lights up. It's across the street from the uh, recycle plant that has uh, a lit up sign that's probably 10 times bigger than this. I can't imagine that this is something that we can't approve. I, I agree. And, uh, through the chair, I don't see anything on here, so I'm making an assumption, but I don't want to do that. Is this sign going to be lit, like backlit? Um, no, there's lamps in the front. Okay. Um, these little gooseneck lamps that kind of just light it up at night. Through the chair, I was, I was there today, and the facade is already there, right? It's going to be on that existing facade. Yeah, it's a nice pine wood facade we put facade we put on the building actually looks pretty nice anybody in the audience to speak in favor in opposition i guess i know what you're all here for hearing nothing from the audience the matter is before the board motion to close the public hearing second motion to approve second all in favor aye any opposed Number 13, Michael Bellante. Grand finale. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 21st, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium City Hall, 24 Lower Street, Peabody, on the application of Michael Bellante, 100 Meadowbrook Road, Dedham, for variance from the provisions to the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as an amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 105 Bow Street, Peabody, Map 23, Lot 13. Petitioner seeks a variance to subdivide a parcel of land into and needs relief to the following for lot one. Lot area where 20,000 square feet is required and 11,557 plus or minus square feet is proposed. Lot frontage where 125 feet are required and 100 feet are proposed. Right side yard where 20 feet are required and 12 feet are proposed. Minimum buildable lot depth where 60 feet are required and 32 plus or minus feet are proposed. For lot two, the petitioner seeks the following relief. Lot area where 20,000 square feet are required and 10,443 plus or minus square feet are proposed. Lot frontage where 125 feet are required and 119 feet are proposed. Right side yard where 20 feet are required and 16 feet are proposed. Left side yard where 20 feet are required and 16 feet are proposed. Rear yard where 35 feet are required and 30 feet are proposed. Minimum buildable lot width where 40 feet are required and 20 plus or minus feet are proposed. Minimal, minimum buildable lot depth where 60 feet are required and 41 plus or minus feet are proposed. The property is located in an R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. 
Good evening, um, Michael Belanti here representing 105 Bow Street. Um, so what we were asking for is um, relief on lot square footage uh, setbacks um, in order to uh, develop a or put a, a subdivide the lot and put a new property next door. The proposed property would be 36 by 28. Um, it would be exist on Lowell Street, so not Bow Street, but exist on Lowell Street um, and maintaining the existing property on Bow Street. Uh, basically, that's The it. builder? Um, I'm the owner of the property. And, and you don't I live, am, do you live there? What's that? No, do I, do not, I do not live there. Um, but I am in the process currently of renovating 105 Bow Street. Anyone live at 105 Bow Street? No, it's under construction. It was dilapidated, so we're in the process of, you know, improving the and neighborhood. What, what, what's the hardship here? Um, the existing prop, uh, the existing lot right now, there's a lot of boulders. It's, uh, tr it's not a hardship. Trees. It's not a hardship. Okay. Is there an existing hardship here? The uh, the uh, the basically the land you know the the, hardship the shape is you of, don't have the shape land? of the land the, right exactly okay that's not a hardship but we'll, we'll listen to everybody tonight is that it yeah, yes I didn't realize I had so much opposition <laughs> on this board that wants to say anything else or shall we listen to the neighbors okay so anybody in a favor. So we're all in opposition. Um, just please be clear and concise. State specifically your concerns. Remember, no neighborhood stuff. Dimensional relief, where you live, why you're against it. If the first seven people say something and there's nothing else to listen to, you state your name and address for the record and say, I agree with the first seven people. So we'll. Hopefully you all want to speak because you waited all this time and that, that's, you're right. So we will start. So you can sit and listen. Perfect. And then you can rebuttal. You got it. Okay. Thank you. So who wants to be first? Yes, hi, my name is Ron Sheehan. I live at 721 Lowell Street, which is diagonally across from where the proposed frontage of this second lot would be. Um, I just want to say that we're completely, I'm completely opposed to it because when, when a variance is given, it's not given to the person. So he could turn around and sell that lot and the variance will be good for a year to whoever buys that lot. So it does not go with the person, it goes with the lot. Um, in the neighborhood, all, there's nobody that has less than 20,000 square feet, and I kind of like to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you, next. Hi, I'm I'm Dan Shields, I live at 23 Bow Street, which is two houses away, because 23, 25, 105, so I'm two houses away. Uh, Stacy Shields, same address, 23 Bow Street. So I built my house at 23 Bow Street, 20,000 square feet, awesome. I built the house next to me, my father's house, 20,000 square feet, awesome. Love the neighborhood. If I could have built four homes, you know, I think it would have been ridiculous. We would have been tight on top of each other, I mean, yeah. I just, against the whole thing. We're, I'm against it for the same reason. I think you set a precedence if you allow 10,000 square foot lots in a 20,000 square foot neighborhood. It was all historical farmland and that's why we all moved there. Next. Uh, Stephen Dwyer, 26 Bow Street, and my wife, uh, Lauren Dwyer, 26 Bow Street. Um, so I grew up in 26 Bow Street, the property directly across the street from uh, the Bow Street subdivided lot, um, and we decided to move back to the neighborhood because of what the neighborhood is, not what this is proposing. Um, large, spent a lot of time growing up in 
Shields Yard and all the neighborhood, all the yards in the neighborhood, and it's very important to us and everyone else that's been on Pinewood, on Bow, on Lowell, in the area for a long time. So strongly, strongly opposed. Uh, it's a it's a family neighborhood. Um, you know, we we bought it because Steve Steve grew up there. Um, there's families throughout the throughout the street. Um, it's a one way street. You know, we people are already driving quickly down it. Um, you know, we want it to be continually a family neighborhood. It's something that's very important to us. And um, I think, you know, by subdividing the properties like this, we also have questions around how that affects our property value over the long term, which is probably most important. Thank you. Thank you. Miller is here. Uh, good evening. My name is Mark O'Neill, and I live at 21 Antrim Road. I'm attending tonight's hearing uh, not only as a concerned resident, but also my role as city councilor representing the residents in this ward and who contacted me about this issue. Um, I'm in opposition to this request plated, sim stated simply. While I understand requests for variances, the request before you tonight re represents significant changes to almost every minimum provision that affects the look and character of the R1 zoning district. The petitioner is requesting to split this property into two lots, both of which are barely 50% of the current 20,000 square foot requirement for lot sizes in this district. The major concern regarding this request is the potential for decay in the character of this neighborhood, but the, also the possibility of continued request for splitting of lots throughout this district. The minimum 20,000 square foot lot size is an important zoning ordinance that should not be changed without compelling reasons. In addition to the request for subdividing the lot, the petitioner is seeking significant relief from a whole host of ordinances, including minimums for lot frontage, side and rear yards, as well as buildable lot width and depth. Each of these requests represents significant differences from current ordinances, and none of these variance requests are about hardship. I urge you to maintain both the character of this neighborhood and this zoning district, and respectfully ask the ZBA to deny the petitioner's request. Thank you. And I couldn't have said it better myself. Anybody else to speak in opposition? Good evening. My name's Christina Levine. I live with my family on Two Pinewood Road. My property is located directly across from the existing property, existing structure on 105 Bow Street. Um, although I certainly, I am in complete opposition of this um, and I, in agreement of what everybody prior to me has said, um, I have some additional concerns. When I first, my husband and I, approximately 18 years ago, moved on up from the city, left Lynn in a goldfish bowl and was trying to look one of the, the beautiful, attractive things about West Peabody was the fact that not just the, the 20,000 square foot lots, but what that offered to a family, the look, the feeling, um, just the attractiveness. And it really just has a beautiful vibe and a beautiful comfort level. And I just think breaking what the plan what the plan has, I mean, it's, he's really like 45% shy of the square footage needed. And it's gonna create a goldfish bowl, not just outside my kitchen and dining room window, but in the whole neighborhood. And it's, it's just so beautiful. And I would and completely in opposition of having that change. Thank you for your time and for listening. Anyone else? I'm Carrie Spears. I live in 107 Bosch Street. I agree with everything you've said. I oppose the plan. Mm -hmm. I'm James Manning. I live across the street from her. And I agree with everyone else here. Thank you. Right. We do have a letter. Um, it is a, an anonymous letter, but we're not going to read it. It does uh, state that 
they are in opposition. So we will take this for the record. Anybody else uh, in opposition that wishes to speak? apologize because I didn't hear what Christina said, uh, but I'll give my own opinion. Uh, Name and address for the record. Name and address. Donald Rubin, Four Pinewood Road. Um, I lived there approximately 36 years, 38 years now. Um, this lot was small to begin with, okay. The man needs relief on all sides. There's certainly no room for two houses. And um, from what I saw, uh, I was told that the uh, entrance and exit to the um, uh, houses would enter onto, uh, exit onto Bow Street. Sir, sir, we want to know why you're in opposition. We, we, know, we know all that. We want to know why you, why you are in opposition. Because I don't want two houses there. That's why. And that, that's okay. good. That's a good reason. Okay. You want to keep with the lot. The, you want to keep with exactly. the, the amount. Exactly. It's not going to be a safe thing. Right. Okay. And safety. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? So, uh, my opinion. I'm only one vote. There is no hardship. Uh, we need to keep the 20,000 square foot rule. That's why we have rules. They are meant to be abided by, not to be disobeyed, so to speak. So I myself it, am also in opposition of this, but I am only in one vote. I, I just want to add to the record, um, Fran, you sta stated um, before the meeting began tonight that it's a good idea for applicants to speak with their neighbors before coming before us. I think this is a great example of why that should have been done and what can happen when it isn't done. Um, I just want to throw that out there on the record, and that's it. to all of my neighbors, um, one of which I have actually met previously. Um, my intention was not to create all this. You, I mean, to be honest with you, I did spend a Saturday going around and talk to the abutting neighbors. Mrs. Sparrows, I actually did speak with you. And told, no, 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 you no, said, no, 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 at long, in, which is fine. But I actually did exactly that, trying to get the feel from the, you know, feel from the neighborhood to see if anybody was opposed. Um, the, the younger couple there, I did knock on your door a couple of times. We never met. Long story short, I wasn't, I, I can see all the opposition here. If I was aware that I had this much opposition, I never would have went forward. I'm not trying to disturb your neighborhood or, I mean, I'm sure everyone here has seen the improvements that we've made on 105 Bow Street, which has been dilapidated, overgrown, half done. You know, so my intention was not to create this stir. And my, you know, my vehicles are, my name with my phone number is right there on my truck five days a week. Um, I did go around the neighborhood. So long story short, I am sorry that I wasted all of our time being here right now because I would have withdrawn my petition. And I would be home doing paperwork and everybody here would be home with their families doing everything that they wanted to do. So, that, that thank is, you very much. You, Appreciate you, it. you are to be commended for that um, rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you. Here is before the board. Second. Roll call vote. Second. No. Well, meeting is adjourned other than to accept the minutes. Uh, 